Welcome, everyone. The address is thefhguide.com. And this is a free site. There are no subscriptions required, no logins, not even any advertising on the site. So uh, it's a pretty simple experience. And we did that intentionally because we want to have an easy entry for people to learn about doing family history and genealogy and not be worried about the cost. So our mission statement here, if I scroll down just a little bit here, is to greatly increase the number of people actively involved in family history worldwide to make everyone's family history journey easier, more efficient, and more enjoyable. I call that the three E's, easier, efficient, and enjoyable. So you can um, get pretty much anywhere you need to get to in the Family History Guide website by using this series of menus across the top here. Notice what happens when I move my cursor over them. You get these drop down menus that happen and you can use those to navigate pretty much anywhere you need to um, within the Family History Guide website. So sometimes people ask, is there an app for the Family History Guide? And the answer to that is no. Um, and I'll show you briefly how that works. So if I narrow my browser window here, at a certain point, you'll see the menus disappear across the top. We have that three line item there. And then you have the menus happening over here on the left side. This approximates what you would see on a tablet if you're looking at the Family History Guide. And if you squeeze it all the way into the end, um, this looks more like what you would see on a phone. So I'm going to pull it all the way back. And the, the Family History Guide platform automatically rec recognizes which type of device you're using and it formats the screens accordingly so you don't have to worry about that. All right, um, here on the home page, I'd like to demonstrate a few features. First, in the upper left, we have select language. So I'm going to click that button. And basically, you can get a list of whatever languages uh, Google Translate supports. So I could click Spanish, for example, and get the Family History Guide translated into Spanish. This is helpful if you've got people who, are, who don't have English as their primary language. And I'm going to switch back to English here. Okay, also we have this blue magnifying glass in the upper left here. The blue magnifying glass is a search feature um, that does a search only within the Family History Guide website. This does not go out to the basic internet around us. It just searches inside the Family History Guide. So I'm going to click that. And for example, if I were interested in information about adoption records, I could click that and I get a list of results. I could click one of the results and I immediately go to a place in the Family History Guide that has resources about that particular topic. So very handy to use. If you're ever wondering how to find a particular topic or item in the Family History Guide, using that blue magnifying glass is a good way to do that. And here we have it up in the upper right here. So you may wonder, okay, I'm off in a page that I'm not familiar with. How do I get back to the home screen? It's pretty easy to do. All you have to do is click the logo in the upper left corner of the screen, and that takes you back to the home page from wherever you are at. Okay, today's tip. Monday through Friday, we have a feature called Today's Tip, and you can click it, and it this one for today talks about how to find and determine relationships in U.S. Census records. And if you want to see a list of all the tips we have at the very bottom, you can click that and it opens up a page and there are literally hundreds of tips going back uh, several years there. So you can explore those wherever you like. And that opens up in a separate window that you can close back up. Let's explore just a couple of items. Over here on the left, we have the intro menu. We'll talk about get started. There's two ways to get there. One is from this menu here, the intro menu. And another is this big bold type link that says click here to get started. So we'll try that. OK, the get started page, we recognize that people have different preferences and interests in genealogy. So not everyone wants to accomplish the same things or wants to get started the same way. So we have a section here called first steps. And this basically helps you learn about the family history guide, we also have a beginner's path with fewer options, so it's a little more easy to get your arms around it. And we have a section on how to gather memories and documents and so forth as you're starting out on your family history journey. 
We also have a complete learning section. You can learn pretty much anything you need to know about family search, ancestry, my heritage, or find my past right here in the family history guide for free. We have an introductory section on learning how to research the research basics and how to explore different country pages to get international research going if that's what you're interested in. There's also a section on activities and other things. And we'll show these in detail a little bit later on in the presentation. A couple of things to show in the intro menu here on the left. We have an FAQ page. So you can click here and you can get just a, a quick summary of bullet points, frequently asked questions and answers. So that's someplace that you may want to explore there. Next thing let's take a look at is something we call the learning system. So it's about halfway down the intro menu here. The Family History Guide is built on a powerful but flexible learning system. So the idea is that you will have the structure that you need to go step by step and find what you need to find and learn what you need to learn. But you also have the flexibility of changing directions where you need to so that you don't have to sit and wade through things that you already know or are not interested in. This picture, if I scroll down a bit, kind of encapsulates what the learning system is about. It's a series of projects, goals, and choices. And we see here some boxes. And you could think of them as boxes of information. Projects are big boxes, goals, medium-sized boxes inside those projects, and the choices are the smaller boxes. And inside choices, we actually have links to articles, videos, websites, and step-by-step -step instructions. So the best way to see how this works is to actually try out a sample project. So let's go up here in the upper menu. And you notice we have, we call these learning paths, a learning path for family search, for ancestry, for my heritage and for find my past, each with its own set of screenshots, steps, instructions, and so forth. As a demo, let's go here to Family Search Project Number One Family Tree. I click that. And one of the first things you'll notice is across the top, you have these goals here. So these represent the medium sized boxes of information. We happen to be in goal number one navigate family tree, but there are other goals here alternate views like fan charts, um, how do you add sources, deal with record hints, so forth. I'm scrolling down just a little bit here, and you see the choices are listed. It's choice A, sign into Family Search, move around the family tree screen, and you have step-by-step -step instructions and screenshots of how to do that. There are also links to articles. So what do you do if you've uh, lost your name or password username? You can click a link there and you get step-by-step -step instructions. So you can go the route of using the step-by-step -step instructions uh, printed out here in the Family History Guide, or you can use additionally the references that are linked in there. So it provides you some flexibility there as well. At the beginning of each choice is a summary. If I click the summary link, I get a few bullet points that explain what we're going to be dealing with in that particular choice. And at the end of a choice, we have exercises. When I click that link, then there's a good level. So if you're good at this particular choice, you can do what it says there. If you're proficient, you can do what it says there. So that gives you a way to review what you're learning and to try out different things that will help you progress. OK, and then we have choice B and so forth. But what if you wanted to see all of the choices in this particular goal without having to scroll all the way down to the bottom. You can do that pretty simply over here in the top area in the goal area is a button called close choices. So watch what happens when I click that button. Now you see just the titles for the choices in the goal. And I could click any one I was interested in and immediately the information pops back there. You see that again. Uh, or the button now says open choices. So if I click the open choices button, which used to say close choices, now it opens up all the text again. So you can close or open choices as you like to uh, control how much information you're seeing on the screen there. Okay, that's basically how 
the structure works for the learning system. You've got a project here. We're in project number one. There's also a project two, three, four, five, six. All the projects are listed in these learning paths there. Then once inside a project, your goals are across the top. And you can switch goals to get down into the nitty gritty of the choices, which have links to the articles, videos, websites, and so forth. Sometimes people ask us if there is a printed version of the Family History Guide. And the answer to that is no, there's not because A, it would be very huge. And B, the content changes often enough that would be really hard to keep up a printed version. We do have to keep the Family History Guide up to date when platforms make their changes and screens and so forth. We need to keep up with that. Also, genealogy is an ever-changing landscape, so there's lots of new things happening. And so we are continually adding, moving around articles and resources and so forth. But you can selectively print what you need to print. So up in the header area here in the goals, there is a print friendly button. So when I click that, it takes a few seconds. And then you see this goal one that we were in. And this is a much better layout for printing and the graphics are compressed and things are laid out easier for print. But what if you didn't want any graphics? You could click on a graphic and it disappears. For that matter, you could click on any item that has a trash can here and you could one by one just start removing items. Um, so you can print pretty much easily what you need to print. If you've made a mistake and you've hidden something that you didn't mean to, you can go back up here to the undo button and just keep clicking it until everything returns back the way you want it to be. You can scale, um, use different print options, print to PDF or print to paper this way. So those are some things that you can do with the print button and that's in the header um, pretty much for every page that we have in the family history guide. All right, so we won't take the time to go through all the different goals in Family Search, but suffice it to say that we have different projects for Ancestry, My Heritage, and Find My Past as well. For example, if I went to Project 2 Ancestry, Family Tree, and Navigate Your Tree, Goal 1, now you'll see that the screenshots are all oriented towards Ancestry instead of Family Search. And you have the step-by-step -step instructions for Ancestry, so you can learn that. And then there's things that are specific to dealing with documents, stories, and photos in Ancestry as well. We're going to skip down to project number four, Discover. And this one has a counterpart in Ancestry. It's called Research and Research and Research for My Heritage and Find My Past. All right, project number four has the basics of learning how to do research. So we're in goal number one, get organized. I'm going to do a closed choices on that. And we've got organize your materials, creating binders, digital files. And I'm closing and opening titles just for my convenience here. But this uh, choice C will help you learn how to use notes, research logs, software to stay organized. Uh, B is about to-do lists um, and keeping track of correspondence. Some good areas to be involved with there. Goal number two up at the top, learn the basics. So there's some basic concepts in genealogy research and we've boiled down some of the best uh, ones that we could find and included them here for you. So this is one of the advantages of the Family History Guide. You don't have to go out and Google a bunch of alternatives or articles or, or you know, trying to find out what you should be doing, kind of reinventing the wheel. We've done the heavy lifting for you. We've assembled uh, industry leading resources, both articles and videos um, that you can check out here, just in time learning when you need it and where you need it. Goal three, form a strategy. We have an introductory video here of just a few minutes that talks about strategies and how you can form them and how you can use them practically. And then we have links to some great genealogists such as a Amy Johnson Crow and her wander approach. Lots of great resources there as well. Okay, when we get over to goal number four here, you'll notice that there is an FS at the side of it. 
That means that this particular goal is specific to family search, as is number five, family search research tools has an FS, but the rest of the goals don't have that. So they're shared across all of the partners there. Let's take a brief look at number five, family search research tools. And I do a close choices, and you can see that this particular goal will help you use the genealogies option, um, sifting through genealogies that have been submitted, the family search catalog, a huge resource for records that have not been completely indexed yet, free books, historical images, the family search research wiki, surname list, and so forth. All right, we're going to hop over here to developing search skills. This likewise has an introductory video that you can watch. And this is about uh, improving your search techniques, using flexibility, um, specifying name variations, um, how to deal with Google uh, searches and Google operators. See, th these are some things that you can try to perfect and hone your search skills, regardless of the platform that you're working on. One of my favorites is the solve problems goal. So let's take a look at that, number seven. And we'll do a closed choices here. How to avoid common mistakes in research. Oh, I love that one. Beginning pitfalls, common mistakes we might run into. Potential problems with terms and records. Is all that information guaranteed to be correct? The answer is no. So sometimes we have to do some due diligence and detective work to figure out where potential problems might be. How to use evidence to resolve conflicting information. Some records and some lines and some genealogies you'll run into have conflicting information. How do you deal with it? How do you sort it out? And how do you find the reliable pieces? Creative approaches to solve problems in non-typical ways, like thinking outside the box, using photographs for your genealogy research, and what do you do when you hit the famous brick wall? Um, some great resources to help you determine when you actually have hit a brick wall and some possible solutions that you can use um, depending on locations, timing, um, resources, and so forth. Okay, so that's project number four. It has its counterparts across all partners in the Learning Partner Series. Let's go back here and just below Discover, and this is the same in all of the menus here, is a something we call the Knowledge Base. So let's check that out. The knowledge base is for general and United States research. We also have a knowledge base for international research, which I'll show you a little bit later on. So here, the idea is that you can find bite-sized pieces of information that you can refer to you know, whenever you need to. We were talking about brick walls. So up here in the top, I could click that topic and I get some nice bullet points along with some links to articles to learn more. Neighbors and relatives cluster research. If some of you have gone into some challenging research avenues, you'll find that doing cluster research can really yield some results for you. So this has some good tips there. And you can go, you know, whether it's census, surnames, schools, orphanages, whatever you're interested in, there are some great tidbits of information in the Family History Guide knowledge base there. Okay, one more thing to check out here, uh, surname ebooks. So surname ebooks on this uh, on the Family History Guide website, we have links to thousands and thousands of surname ebooks that are free. So for example, I could click this name Ainsworth and I come up with a surname ebook here. This is in the Internet Archive. And this is a free downloadable book about Ainsworth families in America. You can print, you can download, you can view whatever you want to do there. Like I mentioned before, there are thousands of free genealogy books on the internet. Internet Archive is a great source. Um, there's also Google Books. Family Search has a huge collection. Um, Hathitrust.org also has an incredibly large collection of free books. So those are worth checking out as well. We have some additional projects here. One that I'll mention is DNA. Now, you'll probably be aware that Family Search does not have a DNA kit, but there is some general information here about basic genetics, uh, ethnicity, uh, as well as some DNA research tools. But if you've taken an, 
a DNA test through Ancestry, for example, you could go to Ancestry and go down to the DNA project there. And then you find some specific things towards Ancestry DNA testing. So I could learn about matching possibilities, how to connect with cousins, how to sift through all of that matching information that you may have received in your test results. Also, I mentioned research tools. So you've got links to some excellent articles and products. So I might mention that in the Family History Guide, we don't link to paid things that you have to purchase. For, uh, for example, if you clicked on an article link and it said, hi, to read this article, you're going to need to pay us, you know, whatever, or sign up for this. We don't do that. We just send you to free sites that you can access easily and you don't have to jump through those hoops as well. All right, so that's a quick tour through the learning paths, Family Search, Ancestry, MyHeritage, and Find My Past. Okay, let's hop over to activities and we'll cover this briefly here. In the family activity section here, I'll just scroll down a bit and you'll see a family history fun basket. Here are some steps. Here's a video that explains how to do it. And one by one, you can scroll through these and find some really cool ideas for family history activities. Here are some topics up here that you could explore. I also mentioned that there are some for individuals, youth and kids. There's also an index to activities. So if you wanted to just browse through here and hmm, save memories on smartphones, that sounds interesting. And you immediately go to the activity so you can check it out. We also have a planning sheet. When you click that, you get a spreadsheet that opens up a Google sheet and it's got a list of all of the activities and you can type in planning notes and notes for next time. You can even rate the activities, that type of thing well worth checking out the activity section in the Family History Guide. In media, we have a blog that you can subscribe to, and we have a couple of articles that come out each Monday. You can subscribe here. You can even listen to the blogs if you're on the go uh, on your device. You can get it translated into different languages, whatever you like there. Also in the media menu, we have a Facebook page, and you can follow us on Facebook for some daily tips and interactions and so forth. We also have YouTube channel with over 200 videos on a wide variety of topics here and playlists and so forth. And we have Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram pages as well. All right, now it's time to hop over to countries. So a lot of what you're doing may involve doing research in particular countries. And the Family History Guide has an extensive collection of help for you in doing precisely that. So I'm going to hover over the countries menu. And if you go down a ways, you can click any one of these areas, such as North America, and you'll get some countries there or regions. I could click British Isles, same thing. And so if I click Ireland, then you would get the Ireland country page and notice the goals are listed across the top. Research, archives and libraries, civil registration, etc., all the way through geography, culture and history. And if I scroll down a bit here, here's an introductory video and you've got your familiar choices um, with links to articles and videos and some databases as well, even some exercises. So that's uh, goal number one, and you can explore a lot about Irish research that way. And it opens up into a separate page that you can open or close. All right, there's another way besides uh, going through these uh, different regions, you can click the link that says all countries. And here in all countries, we get an alphabetical list. So I could access Ireland from here, or I could go to Denmark and open up that country page if I wanted to. Again, the goals across the top. Um, for how to expand your research into Denmark. But what if, going back to the all countries page, what if the country you're interested in is not listed in this alphabetical list here? Then you go to this link on the left side that says more countries, click that and you get a humongous list alphabetized of smaller countries. And when I say smaller countries, that means that there are not 
as many records or resources available in these places that there tend to be in the others that we we're showing you above. So if I wanted to do some genealogy in Aruba, I could click that and here are some quick references and links and you can find plenty more um, places um, to check out in the more countries link. Let's follow the countries menu down a bit here. And again, pretty much any continent in the world and you can click and get uh, different choices there. Um, we also have an ethnic menu here. So if I click ethnic, then I see African American, Asian, Basque, Hispanic, Jewish, and Native American. So since we're in Black History Month, let's try the African American research area. So the goals across the top are get started, how to find record sources, libraries, archives, and other sources, resources, slavery, how to deal with that, and how to break through different barriers. Okay, so back in the countries menu, all the way at the bottom, we have a country's knowledge base. Let's click that. Across the top here, we have abbreviations for different countries. So GER Germany, archives, cemeteries. You can learn pretty much what you need to about all these different countries using these little bullet points of information. So I would recommend this as a great tool to use especially when you're getting into a country that may be new to you in terms of genealogy. You might not be familiar with the customs, the language, the geography, where the records might be located. So the knowledge base for a particular country can be especially helpful. All right, we've been working in the country menu here. Let's go back and spend some time with United States research. So the United States page in the Family History Guide is the largest one because there is just a lot of information to cover there. Across the top in the goals area, you'll see we have this divided into sections. Section A, U.S. records, miscellaneous. B is vital records. C, census. D, immigration. E, military. And F, other records. Rather than go through all of those, we'll just concentrate on a couple here. Uh, for example, let's do census records by decades. So this is C2. And when we click that, I can do a closed choices up here in the top area. And we'll see that we have help for all of the different census years from 1950 all the way back to the first census in 1790. With links to articles, videos, examples, screens, and so forth. And above all of that, you have links to census headings. So what were in the headings in different census years and what census questions were asked? Here are some articles that will provide that information for you as well. So this is a great way to drill into um, census research decade by decade. Section E, military, by conflict. Let's do a close choices there. And we can see we have all the different wars and conf conflicts listed there for the United States. So if you wanted to dig into civil war research, here's an introductory video, and you have all of this information there as well. Okay, um, one other thing to show just quickly, I'm going to go up to goal A1 records. And you've probably seen a couple of these. Uh, you have these little I info buttons here. So when you click the I info button for a video, it opens up the different sections of the video and you can go hop to a different spot in the video. So if I were interested in examining the image, I would open up that video and you go right there. So this helps you, first of all, see kind of a table of contents of the video without having to open it necessarily. And then you can jump right into wherever you need to uh, go to within that um, particular video. All right, if we go up a ways, just below the uh, Statue of Liberty picture here, we have a list, alphabetical list of states in the United States, plus Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico. So let's click California for now. And here are the familiar goals across the top, research and records, 
vital census records, so forth, and you've got your links to articles and videos. So you may be wondering, what are these little lightning bolt icons here across the top? The lightning bolts are a visual way to know that there are what we call quick links available. A quick link takes you directly to a record collection search screen. So let's go here, here to goal number three, vital and census records. I'm going to scroll down a bit and here we have choice B, explore California birth and adoption records. And here we have a series of quick links. FS stands for family search. AC stands for ancestry. So if I click this California birth index 1905, notice that I immediately go to the search screen. I didn't have to wend my way through a bunch of family search menus trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to find this collection? Once you've been reading about the information and you're ready to try it, we make searching just really fast and easy for you. Or I could go to California birth records from select counties, that record collection in Ancestry, open that up and ready to go. Okay, so that opens up Quick Links, but remember that Quick Links are not just for US states. We have them for all the countries around. So if I went back to British Isles, went to Ireland, goal three, for example, and I scroll all the way down to the end, you see a huge list from Ancestry, Find My Past, Family Search, and so forth of records that you could search. And these record collections are 50,000 records and more. If we did all the record collections, the list would be way too long. So 50,000 records and more, they end up in these quick links. Back to the United States page. And one other thing I wanted to show, let's get back to California here. There is a link here that says CA counties. So let's click that link. That takes us to the bottom of the page. Here you have all of the counties in California listed here. And you could click any one of them. The name of the county is in green. And that takes you to a family search information screen. A for ancestry, L for link pendium, and so forth. So we can go to Santa Clara County here, click the county name, and we have the family search page for Santa Clara County, California genealogy. Or we could click L for Linkpendium. I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Linkpendium, but it's a terrific site, it has lots and lots of resources there. And we're scrolling, scrolling, and barely to the letter M here. So lots you can explore with Linkpendium. That's a free site. So you have the options of using any of these different sources here uh, for each uh, county in California, but also for any county in any state in the United States. All the state pages have these county links at the bottom with all of these different options, and each option has a slightly different flavor and direction and focus on what they're doing. Let's move over here to the vault. And you probably have noticed that in the Family History Guide, there is hardly ever a case where you have more than two articles or videos in any one particular step. And we do that on purpose because we don't want to overload people with too many options and too much information right off the bat. But what if you wanted to really do a deep dive into a particular topic? There's more information out there. So that's what the vault is for. I'm going to click the main page here. And across the top, we have all sorts of categories there, um, stories. So I click stories and I get, oh, wow, all these videos about how to write a life story or biography or one for yourself or for your ancestor, um, articles, the art of storytelling, um, descendant research, all of these additional resources that you can spend time getting to know. So these are not the primary ones that we've put in the main part of the family history guide. These are more secondary, but still lots of interesting and useful things here. In each of these major categories, there is a main link. And when I click the main link, it takes me to the main part of the family history guide where it talks about that particular topic about stories and life sketches. And if I want to return back to the vault in the place where I was at, then I can click the vault link and I go back to where I was before with stories. 
each uh, entry where available has a, for videos has a total length of time for the video when it was published and we go from most recent down to earlier and if it's not available then we don't have a date listed there we'll go over here to the tracker so we've talked about your learning progress there's lots of things that you can learn and keep track of how do you keep track of them online? Well, we have a tool, it's actually a secure database called the online tracker that helps you um, organize your learning progress. So I'm gonna click this and see if I have the password right here. There we go. The online tracker is the only part of the family history guide where you have to have a username and password. And that's because it records information that you want to keep um, private. So all of the different projects are listed here. Project one family tree, for example, we were looking at that. So down the left, we have a list of all the goals and all the choices for this particular project. And here I've just kind of basically typed some notes. You can type, you know, whatever you want to um, as a way of recording what you remember or what you need to know about a particular choice or a thing that you're learning about um, in the family history guide. To the right here, we have slider bars for status. So I could move one of them. Zero means I have not started with this choice. One means I have started. Two means that I am at a good skill level with this choice. And three means that I'm at a proficient level with this choice. And the way that you tell whether you're good or proficient is if you remember back to where we were walking through the uh, projects, there was an exercises link. If you click the exercises link, there is an item listed for good and one for proficient. And then you simply have to do what it says there. And then you can move the slider bars here according to you know, whatever skill level that you're at. So you can open up these for any uh, of the projects in the family history guide. One other thing that I wanted to share here is this concept of stars. Okay, so I have logged into the Family History Guide with my account, and I'm going to go back for just a minute to Family Search Project One. We were there before. And you'll notice that before each article or video link, there's a star. And once you're logged into the online tracker, you can click to darken those stars or remove the the dark uh, coloring there. But the idea is that when you mark a star that way, it's a visual cue to you that you have read that particular article. So this gives you a way to see, oh, OK, I've covered this, I've covered this, and so forth. OK, back in the online tracker, what if you wanted a list of all of the articles and videos that you had read or visited on in the family history guide you can use the stars feature here up in the header and it will actually go across the family history guide and create a list with the link and the date that it was ac or accessed last goals and so forth so that can be very helpful help you understand what you've covered and what you haven't covered in the family history guide there are a lot of tools for trainers we won't cover this in this particular um, demonstration but if you do create family history training for someone else or for classes or groups or whatever we have some wonderful amazing ways that you can quickly and easily prepare classes and workshops and webinars and whatever you need to using the family history guide as your source content um, and these links here explain how to do that lastly you can contact us in the miscellaneous menu and you can send us an email here if you find that you'd like some extra help or you have a suggestion for the website or if you find a link that needs updating, let us know.